Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen, where we show you how to make easy, authentic Puerto Rican recipes. During this quarantine, I've been seeing a lot of YouTube videos showing people how to make bread from home. But the one thing I haven't seen is how to make Puerto Rican pan de agua at home. And so I wanted to fix that. So today, we're gonna to show you guys how to make a delicious Puerto Rican bread known as pan de agua. This crusty loaf is great with anything. It's great in the afternoon as a little sandwich or in the morning with your coffee, you name it. And it's easy to make at home. And so I wanna show you guys how you can enjoy this great bread even when you can't leave your house. So let's get cooking. Here are the ingredients for today's recipe. Really basic, we have some flour, just all-purpose flour. I have about five cups in here, um, but the measurements don't need to be too accurate because you need to see just how much water it absorbs to determine how much we use. And I'll explain as we go along. Next, we have some water. Uh, this is gonna be lukewarm water, so you don't want cold water, but you also don't want really hot water. So this is maybe like 105, I think. Um, we're going to use that to dissolve the yeast and the sugar, which is next. So a tablespoon of sugar, packet of dry active yeast. This is going to be our leavening. Uh, then we have two tablespoons of vital wheat gluten. This is optional uh, if you like to have bread that's a little bit crustier, a little bit more chew. I like that, and so it kind of helps firm it up. And then we have some salt, and then we have some crushed ice. Uh, the crushed ice is going to go in when we're actually starting to like knead the dough. Uh, it lowers the temperature and really helps the gluten form better so you get more rise in the bread. So that's real clutch. Um, I'm not going to be using my KitchenAid. We have a KitchenAid, but I just want to show you guys how to do it all by hand so there's, you know, nobody feels left out. Make sure you can do it in your own home. Um, this is going to take us a total of probably six hours to do, so you want to give yourself plenty of time because we're going to do it in various stages. There's kind of three stages and each stage is followed by a one to two hour resting period. Um, so first we're gonna create a sponge, which is just adding the yeast and water and sugar to kind of half of the flour and just let that sit for a while and kind of form up. And then we're gonna add the rest of the flour and knead it into a dough. Uh, and then we're gonna shape it into the final baguettes. So it takes a while, it's not a ton of work, but there's just a lot of wait time between. So make sure to sell, give yourself Plenty of time when you do it. Let's get cooking. Let's start by activating our yeast. Add a tablespoon of sugar to your water and mix to dissolve. This sugar is yeast's favorite food, so it'll provide the energy your yeast needs to begin reproducing and creating carbon dioxide, which is what makes your bread rise. Once the sugar is mixed in, add your packet of yeast to the water and stir to combine. Now let this mixture sit for a couple of minutes you should begin to see bubbles forming on the surface along with a light brown scum. This means your yeast is alive and multiplying, a good thing. Once you see the bubbles, you're good to go. Now add your yeast water combination to a large bowl and add half of your flour. This is now what is called a sponge, in which you allow the yeast to grow and develop. It helps ensure a better rise later on and also imparts a lot of flavor into your bread as the yeasts produce alcohols as a byproduct of their fermentation. Use a whisk to vigorously beat your sponge, trying to incorporate as much air into it as possible. Once thoroughly beaten, cover your sponge with plastic wrap and let it sit for one to two hours. The more time you leave it, the more flavorful your bread will be. I let mine sit for the full two hours. After the two hours, you should see a noticeable increase in the sponge's volume and it should be filled with little bubbles. This is just the yeast putting off carbon dioxide, which means your dough will rise well once it's formed. So now let's form our dough. Take your sponge and add the rest of the ingredients, the crushed ice, the salt, the wheat gluten, and almost all of the remaining flour, reserving about half a cup. 
I find it easiest to add the flour little by little as I mix it into the sponge. You want to keep adding flour until the dough holds together and you can start working it with your hands. You want it to be sticky, as a wet dough will get you a better rise in the end, but you also don't want it to be so wet that you can't handle it. Once you've formed a dough, flour a clean working surface and turn your dough out onto it. If your dough is still wet, keep adding flour as you work it, even if it means grabbing additional flour from your pantry. With the dough on your working surface, begin kneading it. You could use a bread mixer here if you wanted to, it's definitely easier and faster, but I wanted to show how it's done by hand for anyone out there who doesn't have a mixer. In order to knead the dough, just use the palm of your hand to press down in the center of the dough and stretch it forward. Then pull that piece back into your dough as you rotate the dough slightly and repeat the motion. The goal is to constantly stretch your dough and then allow it to relax. This motion helps the gluten form long, continuous sheets of protein, which give the bread its shape and, more importantly, trap the carbon dioxide bubbles produced by the yeast in order to allow the bread to rise. Keep kneading the dough with the same motion. Press down in the middle of the dough with the heel of your palm and push the dough forward. Then collect the dough while rotating it slightly and repeat the motion. If the dough becomes too sticky so you can't work it, just add a little bit more flour and keep going. You want to knead your dough for 10 to 15 minutes until it has a smooth texture. Once your dough is kneaded, we just need to shape it into a ball before letting it rise. To do this, use your hands to cup the dough and then press in with the bottom of your palms to pinch the dough together on the bottom. Rotate the dough ball slightly as you do this so you work your way around the whole dough. Keep doing this until the ball keeps its form and begins to have a smooth surface. Once your ball is shaped, spray your bowl with oil to keep the dough from sticking, then add the dough ball, spray the top with a little more oil, and cover it with plastic wrap. Now we're going to let this rise for two hours. The dough should more than double in volume. Once your dough has risen, take off the plastic wrap and punch it down. Basically what you're doing here is making sure that the yeast is evenly distributed. Because of the ball shape of your dough, a lot of the yeast is concentrated on the inside. So what you want to do is basically flip your dough inside out. To do this, Reach down the back of your bowl and pull the bottom up and over the top of your dough. Now do this again in the front and sides and finish by punching down the dough in the middle. With your dough punched down, you're ready to shape it. Start by dividing your dough. I'm going to be using the dough to make two large baguette shaped loaves, so I divided the dough in half. I like to use my hands to squeeze the dough apart rather than using a knife. I think that cutting your dough just results in more gas escaping and making it rise less. Now begin shaping your two pieces into balls. This is basically the same as we did before. Use your hands to cup the dough ball and press the bottom of the ball together, pinching the two sides in the middle. Keep rotating your ball slightly as you pinch the bottom to ensure an even ball. Once your balls are formed, we're going to grab them on the sides and pull them slightly to make a loose oval. We're going to be making long baguettes, so this is a better approximation than a purely spherical ball. Just pull the sides out, then give it a second to relax before doing it again. Once you've done this, cover your two ovals with plastic spraying them with oil to prevent the plastic from sticking. Then let them rest for 15 minutes to allow the dough to relax. This makes the shaping a lot easier. Once rested, let's form our baguettes. To do this, take your hands and place your thumbs behind the oval while your fingers are in front. Then use your index finger to push the middle of the dough down 
and then pull the back and front together with your fingers and thumbs. As the dough comes together on the top of the oval, pinch it together firmly. You want to make sure the two sides seal together, so make sure it's a firm pinch. Do this along the entire length of the oval, tucking in the ends. Then give your loaf a couple rolls before repeating the process. Push the dough down in the middle, then pull the front and back together, pinching them at the top. Once you've done this process three times, your baguette is shaped. Now just roll it out to your desired length, tapering it towards the end. Repeat the process with your second oval. Once your baguettes are shaped, cover a baking sheet with parchment paper. Here, I folded the parchment paper so it forms a wall in the middle in order to separate the two baguettes. Now transfer your baguettes onto the pan, spray them with a little oil, and cover them with plastic wrap. You want this plastic covering to be very loose in order to give the loaves plenty of space to expand as they rise. Now let your loaves rest for two hours. Once your loaves are almost done resting, turn your oven on to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and add a small metal tray to the bottom of your oven. We are going to coat your loaves with an egg wash before baking them, so let's make that now. Just beat together one egg along with a tablespoon of water. Make sure to beat it until the mixture is smooth and easy to spread. Then use a brush to paint the egg wash onto your loaves, which should be fully risen by now. Once you've put your egg wash on your loaves, you have the option of scoring your bread before baking it. I like doing this because I think it looks prettier, but it also gives the dough a little more room to rise as it heats up in the oven. To do this, just use a really sharp knife or razor blade and cut the loaves diagonally in three or four places. Because your dough is pretty wet, be careful not to cut too deeply or you'll end up tearing it more than you want. Right before you put your loaves into the oven, Add a cup and a half of hot water to the pan you placed in the bottom of the oven. Then add your loaves and quickly close the door. You want to add this water in order to keep the oven moist during the first 10 to 15 minutes of the bake. This moisture keeps the bread surface soft, allowing it to grow in volume in the oven, something known as oven spring. Now bake your bread for about 25 minutes. After the 25 minutes, take a spray bottle filled with pure water and use it to spray your loaves. This additional water helps to create a crust on the top of your bread. Depending on how crusty you want your bread, you can do this two or three times every couple of minutes. After spritzing your bread with water, bake it an additional five to 10 minutes until it's golden brown and sounds hollow when you knock on it. Once it's done, take it out and transfer it to a cooling rack. When you cut into it, your bread should be crusty on top with a soft inside and an irregular crumb. You're now ready to enjoy it. And there you go, pan de agua. So if you've had pan de agua from a local panaderia in Puerto Rico, you might notice that these are a little bit uh, wider and not as tall as the ones. Um, they have these nice pans that kind of basically have this U-shaped hole that you put the baguettes in and they kind of raise up. Uh, so you get a little more height, um, but not as much width. So that's the, you, they sell them uh, at baking stores, so you could definitely get those. It's the same thing, you just put them in there and then they just help shape it. Um, but yeah, so, so this is how it is. Uh, you see that you got this nice, really nice crust from the spritzing it with the water. Uh, you can hear it. Ooh, yeah. Uh, a lot of bakers talk about how you know the bread is done by that like crunch. Uh, and you also want to like knock on it, and if you if it sounds hollow on the inside, you know you're doing good. 
Uh, and so this is great. Uh, it's great bread. Um, it's great by itself. Uh, I got it with a little butter here, so I'm going to give it a little try. Maybe I need to melt that butter a little bit more. Mm. Really crusty because of the water on it. Tastes great. Like I said, it's great for sandwiches. Um, it's really great in a hot chocolate. That's a super traditional way to do it. Um, cold winter night, a little hot chocolate, a little bread, a little butter. It's awesome. Uh, so I hope you guys try it. I hope you guys like this. I really encourage you to try some baking. Um, I know usually, you know, you, you think of them as a very different thing than cooking, but really it's kind of all a little the same. And here it's, you know, pretty straightforward because you just kind of follow the recipe. And again, this it's taken a while. Um, it's taking most of the afternoon, but um, it hasn't been a ton of work, just a lot of waiting for everything to rise. So I hope you guys liked it and give it a shot and let us know how it goes in the comments below. I hope you liked the video. Like usual, subscribe if you haven't already. Like our video, share it with your friends. Uh, tell people about the great Puerto Rican bread that's out there. And then we'll see you again next week for another episode of Jeff and Joe's Puerto Rican Kitchen.